Hello, and welcome to Classic Violins. Today we're going to talk a little bit about instrument bows, and specifically the material used to make instrument bows. When selecting an instrument for purchase, obviously a lot of time and consideration goes into testing out how the instrument sounds, how it feels to play, the particular sound qualities and tone that you enjoy, and making sure that ultimately the instrument will be a good fit for the music that you're playing and the styles that you're playing in. The same consideration should go into choosing a bow, but unlike choosing an instrument, there is a different uh, aspect of the bow that needs to be considered sometimes, which is the physical material. Fine handmade instruments are generally always made of the same materials, spruce, maple, ebony, um, but bows can be made out of very different types of material, ranging from natural to synthetic, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. We get many questions from customers about, is one better or worse? What's the difference? What should I buy or consider? And we're going to unpack a few of these things. So broadly, bows fall into two different kinds of material categories, one which is natural wooden materials, um, and the second is synthetic materials, which broadly encompasses everything from fiberglass to composite plastics, um, f uh, carbon fiber, anything essentially that's not natural wood. So to start, um, Natural wooden bows. So the material of choice that's been used for hundreds of years is called Pernambuco, which is a rainforest wood that comes from South America primarily. Um, it is prized for bows in particular because it is very strong, which is a, a qualification that you need for a bow that's going to be taking a lot of pressure and being played, um, but it's also very flexible. Um, it has a nice natural flex in it, even in very small thin pieces like a bow. Uh, this is very important, of course. You will notice that as you are tightening your bow or loosening your bow, it of course changes how much pressure and how much tension is on that stick, and that tension in turn allows you to make different articulations to adjust the volume of how you are playing, um, and also give you some of that spring back, especially if you're doing off-the-string techniques um, and other types of bow positions. If the bow was too stiff and didn't have that articulation, it'd be kind of like driving a car with no suspension over a bumpy road. Every slight change in your arm and your bow pressure is going to then and you can see it even bouncing off my finger here. Um, without that, that rigidity is going to translate into a lot of stutters and difficulty in your sound. Um, and this is why the not just any piece of wood will do for a for a bow stick. Now, because Pernambuco um, is a very specific type of wood and really only comes from one place in the world and is also a controlled species, um, it gets very expensive. And getting a quality piece of wood that over time will not bend or warp or go out of shape or have some of these issues is an added cost and an added consideration. Um, wooden bows, however, do have a very nice sound. They translate vibrations very, very nicely. Um, but there are alternatives, and this brings us around to our synthetic material bows. Um, now, while there are just a few types of wood, primarily Pernambuco, there's also one called Ipe. Um, there's even a, another very hard wood, which is called snake wood, that has kind of a wild um, grain pattern to it that's also very heavy that can be used for making bows traditionally. Um, when it comes to synthetics, there are a lot more different options. One of the most basic options that a lot of students are familiar with is fiberglass. Um, this is a bow by a company called Glasser. Um, we use a lot of these for our rental instruments. They are essentially a fiberglass stick. Um, they're a little bit lighter on average feeling. Bows can be all different types of weights, of course, and can be adjusted, but um, the Glasser fiberglass bows tend to be a little bit lighter, which for some people can offer better control. Um, and they're also fairly inexpensive. A glass or bow you can usually purchase, um, depending upon what instrument you're looking for, for $100 or less. Um, it's a good entry-level bow, um, and they are very, very indestructible as well. They are long-wearing bows. They don't offer quite as much nuance um, if you are a serious player, um, and so as your technique develops and as you go on, they may not be the best choice. Um, this brings us up to another type of material, which is a composite or a graphite composite bow, which is again another type of composite process. But this generally offers a little bit more flexibility and better response. It's kind of an upgrade from the glass or bows without adding a whole ton of cost from there. Um, there are many different companies that use different recipes for composite plastics in order to create that good response and that nice flexibility, um, but the real next step in, in composite materials winds up being carbon fiber. And this is one of the ones that you've probably heard about um, or gets talked about the most as far as terms of synthetic bows. Um, this bow 
all I have here is by a company called Kotobo. Um, it's a very well-known company. They have a lot of press, and you've probably heard of them or seen them somewhere. Um, their bow material uses a braided carbon fiber. So carbon fiber is kind of like a cloth material almost. There is a weave to it if you look at these bows very, very closely. Um, and that is impregnated with the type of resin that makes it very stiff, but also very flexible. Additionally, they're very, very light, and they have a lot of flexibility in the manufacturing process to change exactly how these feel and respond. Coda Bow, for example, has a range of several different bows that are all weighted and flexed slightly differently. So depending upon what you're interested in, it's almost like playing a range of wooden bows. There is a lot of uh, minutia and small differences you will notice across the bow range. Um, some people dislike that look of carbon fiber and they think that that's kind of strange. And if you are being more traditional, we also do have carbon fiber bows that are wrapped in a very thin wooden veneer, a Pernambuco veneer. So to the eye, it essentially looks like a normal wooden bow, but it still has that carbon fiber core and behaves just like a normal carbon fiber bow. So the question then becomes, why would you choose one versus the other? Um, there is not necessarily a particular disadvantage or advantage to a carbon fiber bow versus a natural wooden bow. One does not always sound better, does not always play better. Um, it really gets down into like choosing a bow or any instrument, what your preferences are, how you approach the instrument, and what you are looking for. However, one of the broad differences between the two materials is essentially how they wear and how they respond over time. Wood being a natural material, just like your instrument, will be affected by changes in the air, humidity, and also temperature. And over time, these changes can cause the wood to react, to expand, to shrink slightly, to even warp over time. So if you are playing in an area that um, has either very, very high or very, very low humidity levels or temperatures, or traveling a lot where these fluctuate quite rapidly, or if you are playing outside, for example, quite a lot for weddings or other gigs, or especially in our time of pandemic here, um, um, not in enclosed performance areas, wooden bows can sometimes take a hit and be a little more unpredictable with that weather change. The synthetic material bows, the main advantage there is that they are not usually affected at all by changes in humidity and temperature. Maybe slightly, you might notice differences in your bow hair, but that's the bow hair itself stretching or contracting. Um, with that in mind, the hard-wearing um, synthetic material bows are usually very nice for people that are playing outdoors quite often, or maybe playing in situations like a classroom with a lot of children running around, um, or a, a performance venue like a bar or a restaurant where there may be people and you are concerned about a nice wooden bow falling or getting damaged or anything like that. The other consideration is that because the synthetic bows, for example, like uh, Coda Bow in particular, um, because there are different models and they are all made, the models are made essentially the same, if something were to ever happen to a synthetic bow that you have, one of these carbon fiber bows, this one, for example, is a Coda Bow Prodigy. If you own one of these bows and it were to be lost or stolen, if you go out and replace it with another Coda Bow Prodigy, it will essentially play and respond and be the same bow that you were used to before. Whereas a wooden bow, just like a wooden instrument, each one is slightly unique due to the material used, the physical qualities of that piece of wood, how it was made, um, even two bows by the same company, by the same maker are going to be slightly different. So if you were to lose or have a wooden bow be destroyed, replacing it can sometimes be a little bit more of a journey and you may need to invest a little bit more time. All of this is to say that essentially there is no one superior option. Certainly people have preferences. A lot of teachers have preferences as well. And your teacher may have ideas for you based on how you play and how you approach the instrument for which type of bow they may want to see you try and experiment and use, but ultimately it comes down to your trying and experimenting with the bows as well. If you'd like to try out some different bows, either carbon fiber, um, synthetics, um, natural wooden bows and different materials, we'd love to hear from you. We'd be welcome uh, for you to come to our shop and make an appointment to try some of these different bows out and see what works best for you. If you have an instrument already, it's great to experiment across that instrument. But if you're also looking for an instrument to purchase or trying some out, we'd be happy to help you with that too. Any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, through our website, classicviolins.com, or send us an email to info, I-N-F-O, at classicviolins.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.